guys. Come on, Jesus. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Who's excited to be in church today? Hey, that was pretty good, pretty good, but it was still a little louder at the Padres game. Who's excited to be in church today? That's what I'm talking about. Come on, Jesus. Guys, Saturday was crazy with art, I heard. Thursday was nuts. The Holy Spirit showed up and blowed up. At the very beginning, we said, uh, Lord, lead us somewhere. Lead us somewhere. And we had a bunch of different teams going out and all that stuff. But my team, the Lord said, don't talk to anyone. Just go straight for like a mile all the way down to that little corner liquor store right uh, next to 16th and 17th. And so we did. We were like walking by people. We had this food. And we're like, we're just going to go, 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 go. And we went and um, we just felt very strongly to do it. So we were there and we were praying for people. And this lady jumped out of nowhere and she was like, hey, I need prayer. Um, I need Jesus. So we prayed for her. God touched her. She had some, some trauma from war. She had been in war. She had done some stuff she wasn't proud of. And she was just weeping. And she wouldn't believe that God loved her. She wouldn't believe that God forgave her. She wouldn't believe any of that, right? And so... I said, ma'am, Jesus literally died because he loved you. And she's like, no, I just, I can't receive. I've, I've been too bad. I've done two horrible things. And I said, well, would you believe that an hour and a half ago, I was praying about where to go, and we walked by 50 people just to get here because the Lord said we had an appointment. And would you believe that you're the reason, and God literally told us to come all the way over here just to show you that he loved you. And we prayed to her, and she got wrecked. We broke demons off of her. She got joy. She opened her eyes. She's like, this is crazy. I can't explain how I feel. I feel amazing. And we're like, that is Jesus. Come on, Jesus. God's doing something. Okay, guys, um, I, I don't want to take uh, too much time before I jump into this topic. This is a very, very important topic. Today we're talking about intimacy with God, okay? Everyone say Intimacy. It'll probably be a little bit different than the way you've heard it before. It was for me because it's directly from the Holy Ghost, not my seminary, not my Greek and Hebrew notes. It is straight from the Holy Ghost, okay? So um, I forget the name of this movie. There's a movie. I want you to get this kind of picture in your head. But there's a movie, and it's about uh, the world ending from the, the polar ice caps. I forget the name of the movie, but it's like uh, basically like the world almost ends, like there, an ice age comes. Does anyone remember what the name of that movie is? Day After Tomorrow. Day After Tomorrow, right? And so there's a movie, and there's this one scene where all of a sudden, like, everything gets froze again, right? And snow's over New York, snow's over everything, right? And so the people are running around, and there's a group of kids who like the heroes in the movie, and they run into the library, the top story of the library, and they take all the books, and they throw them in the fireplace, and they start a fire because they said, when this freeze comes over, if we're not close to this crazy hot fire, then we are going to freeze to death and be part of the second great ice age, right? And so they run up, run into the library, run up top, start burning, and then all of a sudden, it's Hollywood, you know? But And so all of a sudden, the whole library starts freezing over, right? And you see the ice kind of slowly come up the stairs, right? It's like, right? And there's a librarian who's, who's just walking, and then she gets frozen, right? And I feel like she had a little bit more life in her after she was frozen, but that's... <laughs> That's a joke. I was a librarian for a while, so I can say that. I didn't do the bun and the glasses, but I wanted to. And so so the, the frost is coming, 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 right? And they are just throwing books on the fire, throwing, and everyone's trying to get as close as they can to the fire, right? And then finally, they get right up to the fire, and then the thing comes, and it goes all around them because they're so stinking hot, and they're like sweating on this side, and on the other side, literally everything in the whole room is turning frail, it's turning frigid, it's turning frozen, right? If, you, if you've ever seen like videos or been in uh, uh, climates where it's like 50 below, 65 below, Low, then literally like you breathe your breath freezes you can see it right you take a, a cup of boiling water throw it in the air it instantly becomes snow it's crazy right but these people were so close to the fire that they're sweating while everyone around them is literally getting frozen to death, right? And intimacy is all about that. And I felt very strongly the Lord wanted me to share that analogy at the beginning because there is a time coming in America. I shouldn't say coming, it's already here. But there's a time increasing in America where if you're not flaming hot on fire, then darkness and coldness is going to try and come over you, right? And you got to be close to the fire, 
man. You got to be on fire. And the whole world gets frozen over, and these people get out and all that stuff, and then they restart humanity, blah, 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 right? But listen, God is looking for people who have flaming, fiery intimacy. You say, well, Lord, I pray a little bit, and the Lord says, man, I want you hot, or you might as well be cold, but I don't want you lukewarm. I want you to get in the fire, right? And God's calling you to a call of intimacy. He's calling you back into it. And not just for the sake of Him, but I strongly, strongly believe, and there's a lot of prophets and all that stuff, but just from my secret place, I strongly believe a crazy time is increasing in America, and you friends need intimacy so that you can glow in the middle of hardship, so you can shine like the sun in the middle of a deprived and broken generation, right? But you need to be close to the fire. You need to be hot and on fire fire right and you say well brother i have the fire in me yes you do why don't you stir it up a little bit right come on dude you might have the fire in you but you better stir up the flame right there's a a translation that says fan into flames the gift that was put inside of you timothy fan it into flames come on jesus okay moving on moving on the second picture i want you to picture and i'm gonna read psalms 18 real quick is uh david david's on the mountain he's seeking the lord psalms 18 1 I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock, whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. David started his ministry not ministering, seeking the Lord in intimacy and worship. I want you to close your eyes right now. I want you to just imagine that you're on the hillside, right? David became king of Israel, but he started as king of the hill, right? I want you to close your eyes. Just imagine that you're on that hillside. It's just you, Jesus, and the sheep, right? And they're low-maintenance sheep, right? So you're not having to do as much, right? And so just you and Jesus in intimacy that's how kings are made friends is in the secret place that's how queens are made is in the secret place the bible says whatever you do in the secret place the lord will reward you openly you want to be a king you want to be a queen get intimate with the lord seek the lord right so i want you to see yourself there just imagine yourself there and then come back and we're going to do it with one more thing revelations 5:11 Revelations 5.11 Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels I tell you what, why don't you close your eyes now I want you to imagine just being in heaven for two seconds This is what we're going to do for the rest of our eternity and existence To spend intimate time with God So close your eyes, we're going to read Revelations real quick And just let your mind create a word picture Let the Holy Spirit create a word picture of what I'm reading here Revelations 5.11 Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels Around the throne, the living creatures and the elders And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard them saying blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and the lamb for forever and ever and ever open your eyes for a second god is calling you to intimacy today some of us know about god but we don't know god the word uh depart from me i never knew you that word knew is gnosko in the greek and that means to have the same level of intimacy that a man has when he knows his wife in marriage right and god wants a deep not physical spiritual intimacy he's calling you into the secret place he's calling you into intimacy today he's saying hey i miss you i love you i want to get you back i want to get you closer some of us when we talk about prayer and all this stuff we get freaked out because our flesh gets weirded out but our spirit kind of gets a little bit excited right and god's calling you into the secret place today he's saying i love you i haven't forgotten you i love you come on jesus call to intimacy revelations 2 revelations 2 verse 1 to the angel of the church of ephesus write these things say he who holds the seven stars in his right hand who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands i know your works your labor your patience and that you cannot bear those things who are evil those who, I'm sorry, those who are evil. And you have tested those who say that they are apostles. You've tested those who say they're apostles, and they are not. And you have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Verse 4 is where we're at today. Nevertheless, I have this against you, 
that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent, and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But, but, this is you, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. God is calling us to a place of intimacy. In Revelation, He literally says, Guys, you're doing some good stuff. Don't get it twisted. I'm not condemning you. But I'm saying one thing you've forgotten, and that's that deep place of secret place of intimacy. You're forgetting about how it all started. He said, Go back to what you did at the beginning. Remember the first time that you got saved? Remember when you got saved and you actually started seeking the Lord for the first time and you were just like devouring His Word and consuming His Word? Remember those deep prayer times? Remember the first church you went to? And the Holy Spirit was there. Maybe He wasn't there, but for you, He was. You know what I'm saying? And you were like, I'm hungry. I just want God. Remember that hunger. Remember that deep time. Remember the fasting. Remember the seeking. The Lord's saying, I'm calling you back into a place of intimacy. I'm calling you back into a place of intimacy. Don't let the world distract you. Anything, whether good or bad, can become an idol if you give it too much glory and precedence in your life. And God's calling you out of idolatry of this world, and He's calling you into the secret place. Shuck it up off. Come on, Jesus. We've forgotten about the secret place. Come on, Jesus. Okay. Um, I'm going to just read a quote from uh, Cross on the Switchblade. Uh, I love Cross on the Switchblade. It's a book that kind of turned me on to secret place and intimacy. It changed my life. And it's from David Wilkerson, and it's awesome. It's about, it talks about how he got into the secret place for the first time. But this is from the book. Great book. Highly recommend it. And while, while I'm about to just read this, I want you guys to really challenge yourself. Some of you guys are saying, hey, I'm doing great. I'm seeking the Lord. You know, I pray for blah, blah, blah. You know, I read the word blah, blah, blah. Right? But I'm, it's not about what you do. It's a heart behind it. And I want to challenge you to search your heart and say, am, am I open to God again? Am I hard before the Lord? Have I let my heart grow hard before the Lord? Have I started seeing God through people? Have I let offense get in the way of my relationship with God because of what people have done? Am I soft before the Lord? The Lord's calling and saying, come deeper. Come deeper. Come deeper. Come deeper. Come on, Jesus. Shik Okay, so I'm going to read this from the book real quick. Um, it's like page 12 or something. I made that up. I don't know what page it is. But it's from the cross on the switchblade. Gwen and I worked hard in Phillipsburg by New Year's Day, 1958. There were 250 people in the church, including Bonnie, our new little daughter. Man, he just had a new baby. He must have had a lot of distractions there. Come on, Jesus. But he says, I was restless. He's a, he's a pastor in this little church, and he's talking about how the church is growing all that stuff, but he's restless because something inside of him wants a little bit more. Come on, Jesus. Guys, he has 200 members. This is a pretty busy boy. He just had a brand new baby. He's a pretty busy guy, right? But he's restless. But I was restless. I was feeling a kind of spiritual discontent that wasn't satisfied by looking at the new church building or the swelling missionary budget or the crowding the pews. I remember the night I recognized it. It was February 9th, 1958. On that night, I decided to sell my television set. Okay, come on, Jesus. I'll just say it again. On the night that I decided to sell my television set. I'll just say it one more time. Desperate kicks and goo. On the night I decided to sell my television set. Okay. <laughs> moving on, moving on. Gwen and the children were asleep when the idea came to me. I was sitting in the front of the set watching the late show. I wonder who was host of that. What, who was it? Carson. Johnny Carson. All right. What would happen if I sold the TV? Whoa, don't throw stones. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what would happen if I sold that TV, set and spent the time two hours a night praying? Right away, I thought of objections to the idea. I was tired at night. I needed the relaxation. Television was part of our culture. It wasn't good for a minister to be out of touch with what people were seeing and talking about. I got up from my chair and I stood at the window, looking out over the moonlit hills. Then I bowed my head. I made an experiment in a special kind of prayer that seeks to find God's will through a sign, which as a pastor I wouldn't recommend doing that a lot, just in special circumstances. Putting a fleece before the Lord, it's called. Because Gideon, when he is trying to find God's will for his life, asks for a sign. He plates a lamb's fleece on the ground and asks him to send dew every morning, uh, everywhere but there. In the morning, the ground was soaked with dew, but Gideon's fleece was dry. God had granted him a sign. 
Jesus, I said, I'm going to put an ad for that TV set in the paper. If you're behind this idea, let a buyer appear right away within an hour. No, within half an hour after the paper gets on the streets. I made it pretty hard on God because I really didn't want to give up the television. When I told Gwen about my decision next morning, she was very unimpressed. She said, half an hour? It sounds like you don't want to sell your TV and do the praying. <laughs> Gwen had a point, but I put the ad in the paper anyhow. It was a comical scene in our living room after the paper appeared. I sat on the sofa with a television set looking at me from one side, the children and Gwen looking at me from the other, and my eyes on a great big alarm clock beside the telephone. 29 minutes passed. Well, Gwen, I said, it looks like you're right. I guess I won't have to ring, ring. I don't know if that's how telephones rang in the 1960s, but I tried. Is that it? Okay. The telephone rang, and I picked it up slowly. You, ask, you have a TV set for sale, a man's voice asks. That's right, an RCA in good condition. 19-inch screen, two years old. How much do you want for it? $100, I said. I'll take it, the man said. You don't even want to look at it? No, have it ready in 15 minutes. I'll bring the money. <laughs> he says, my life changed every night at midnight. Instead of flipping the channels, I stepped into my office, closed the door, and began to pray. At the first time seemed to drag, and I grew restless. He said, at the first, the time grew... Uh, dragged and I grew restless. It's hard, right? Pushing into the secret place. It's not an easy thing right away. He said that first it's difficult. I grew restless. I started pacing, walking around. It's difficult. He had to push past that, right? Then I learned how to make Bible reading a part of my prayer life. I never read the Bible, though, including all the begats. I learned how to impart. I never read the whole Bible, though, including all the begats. I learned how important it is to strike a balance between prayers of petition and prayers of praise. What a wonderful thing it is to spend a solid hour just being thankful. It throws all of life into a new perspective. It was during one of these late evenings of prayer that I picked up Life magazine. I'd been fidgety all night, and Gwen and the children were in Pittsburgh visiting grandparents. I'd been at prayer for a long time. I felt particularly close to God, and yet for reasons I could not understand, I also felt a heavy sadness. I wondered what it could possibly mean. I felt uneasy. As though I had received orders, but I could not make out what they were. I got up and walked around the study. On my desk lay a copy of Life. I reached over to pick it up, then caught myself. No, I wasn't going to fall into that trap, reading a magazine when I was supposed to be praying. I started prowling around the office, but each time I came to the desk, my attention was drawn to the magazine. Lord, if there's something in there you want me to see, I said aloud. I sat down on my desk and opened the magazine. A moment later, I was looking at a pen drawing of seven boys, and tears started running down my face. And then he talks about how um, he, he ends up starting Teen Challenge, right? And Teen Challenge has literally helped millions and millions of people get off drugs and addiction through the power of the Holy Spirit all around the world. But that all came from his prayer closet. And I know this is a lot of reading, but I'm going somewhere specific today. I'm going to do one more, and then we'll move on. This is Benny Hinn, Good Morning Holy Spirit. Um, that is one of our required books for Fire Academy. If you haven't done Fire Academy or you haven't read the book, please definitely read Good Morning Holy Spirit. It's about intimacy with God. God is calling you back into intimacy today. Come on, Jesus. It was three days before Christmas, 1973. The sun was still rising on that cold, misty Toronto morning. Suddenly, he was there. The Holy Spirit entered my room. He was as real to me that morning as a book you are holding in your hand is to you. For the next eight hours, I had an incredible experience with the Holy Spirit. It changed the course of my life. Tears of wonder and joy coursed down my cheeks as I opened the scriptures, and it gave me the answers to my questions. It seemed that my room had been lifted into the hemisphere of heaven, and I wanted to stay there forever. I birth. uh, uh, I had just turned 21, and this visitation was the best birthday or Christmas present I had ever received. Just down the hall were my mother and dad. They would never possibly understand what was happening to their Benny. In fact, had they known that I was experiencing it, it could have been the breaking point in a family that was already on the verge of shattering. For nearly two years since that day, I gave my life to Jesus. There was virtually no communication between my parents and me. It was horrible. As a son of an immigrant family from Israel, I had humili humiliated the household by breaking tradition. Nothing else in my life had been this devastating. 
In my room, however, there was pure joy. When I first started going into the secret place, it was difficult, and I had a hard time pressing in. After a week, I would run home after work just to get into the secret place with God. I would say, no way, but from that very moment, the Holy Spirit became alive in my life. He was no longer a distant third person of the Trinity. He was real, and he had a personality. And he goes on deep and talks about how the intimacy with God changes him from the inside to the out. It's a call back to intimacy, guys. We're going to talk a little bit about the dark cloud. Everyone say the dark cloud. cloud. Okay, turn to uh, 1 Kings 8.10 real quick. 1 Kings 8.10. And while we're turning there, I want you guys to remember that the reason we're reading these stories is God is calling you into the secret place. David Wilkerson, when he first started, he's like, oh, I'm just, I'll pray a little bit, you know, get rid of my TV. But out of it, God changed every part of him. And he started having the weeping for the hurting, the loss, the broken. He couldn't stop himself from reaching out to the people who needed it. And it's funny, he says it was difficult at first. Some of us expect it to be easy, right? Like our flesh would just kind of lie down and go to sleep when it's been our master our whole lives, right? But no, it is hard to press into the secret place, but you got to do it, right? Because God is pressing into you and he's waiting for you. You just got to meet him there. Come on, Jesus. The Bible says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. 1 Kings 8.10. And when the priest came out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord. Everyone say the cloud. The cloud filled the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand there to minister to the Lord because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And Solomon blessed the Lord. Then Solomon declared, The Lord has said that he would dwell in a thick cloud. I have indeed built you an exalted house, a place for you to dwell forever. Psalms 97, 2. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Right here, he's talking about the cloud. Now, the cloud represents intimacy. God wants you to be alone with him. That's why it's a dark cloud. He wants it to be you and him and a cloud around you, right? Now, I'm not a big person on, like, Jewish artifacts in the context of, like, oh, you know, you need to have a lamb shank bone at every meal and a seat left open for Elijah. And realize that um, I grew up Jewish. Uh, My dad was Jewish, right? He got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost and all that stuff. So I grew up Pentecostal Jewish, whatever that is, right? (laughs) My dad would do communion services, all that stuff, and it's awesome. Then and I, uh, a while ago, we were watching this movie, and Woody Allen jumped in, and she's like, oh, my goodness, that's your dad. <laughs> he looks just like him. But, so I'm not a big person on Jewish artifacts, but it's funny that God actually, there's certain things that God has for a very specific reason because there's a lot of anointing on it. And one of those things is a prayer shawl right? And it's something, and you don't need to get a shawl, although you can on Amazon for $20, right? Nineteen ninety-five. But you need something to put over your face to get in the secret place. Guys, the anointing increases so much when I'm just there alone with God. He's coming in the dark cloud because He wants to be alone with you. He wants it just to be you and Him. He's calling you out of this place of confusion and idolatry. Everything in your life that comes before God in your mind, in your heart, is a light or heavy version of idolatry and God wants you to get deeper he wants to call you in a little bit deeper he's saying come on in the water is fine my glory is here I've been waiting for you your whole life come into the prayer closet come on in come on Jesus but he's there in the in the secret place Matthew 6 5 and when you pray don't be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by men Truly I say to you, they already have their full reward. Already have. Guys, the Pharisees did everything to be seen by men. In Luke 14, as a side note, Jesus said, Jesus noticed how the guests chose the best places of honor. He told them a parable. When you're invited to a wedding banquet, do not sit in a place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited. Then the host who invited both of you will come and tell you, give this man your seat. And in humiliation, you will have to take the last place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the last place, so that your host will come and tell you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in front of everyone at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. The Pharisees exalted themselves. They said, look how good I am. When they went to a good place, to a feast, they'd run in there, they'd take the best place and say, look at us, right? And then the, the guest, the uh, party thrower at the house, would be like, uh, you know what? You should probably sit at the end of the table. We have some honored guests here, and I don't want to embarrass you, but get down there, right? 
if you exalt yourself, you will be humbled. But if you humble yourself, you'll be exalted. God wants to exalt you in due season, but you need to humble yourself. Come on, Jesus. Don't toot your own horn. But moving on with Matthew 6, 6. But when you pray, go into your inner room and shut your door. Everyone say inner room. And shut your door. And pray to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret. Oh, I feel a word from the Lord. The Lord is saying that He's called you into a secret place and you tried to fill yourself with different people, with different relationships, with different things, with different distractions, even material things. And God has called you into a deep relationship with Him. And He's setting you free from darkness and He's pulling in the holiness out of your life. And He's calling you deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And He says, if you get lost in the the love of others or seeking for the love of others you don't really understand my love and my love will satisfy that desire in your heart come on jesus moving on and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you and when you pray do not babble on like pagans for they think by their many words they will be heard do not like them for your father knows what is needed before you ask guys there's three levels of intimacy the first is just praying in general is an intimate thing with god just praying like literally just praying being in intercession is an intimate thing with god the second is getting alone right he says when you pray go into a closet by yourself and the lord who sees in secret will reward you openly the second level of intimacy is getting into a place by yourself i can tell you over the last 18 years i've been praying now i have prayed in bathroom stalls to be alone i've prayed in library study rooms i've prayed in backyards i've prayed in front yards i've prayed in attics i've prayed in basements i've prayed in garages garages are great by the way when you're visiting someone just be like i need to do my little morning routine in the car garage right you go out there and you got the whole garage if they're a clean person and one third of the garage if they're not right and you go around praying and you have a like a little place but get alone with god he's waiting for you in the loneliness He's waiting for you in the secret place. He's waiting for you. He said, I have this hunger and I can't seem to get filled by everything in life. And I guarantee you, I've tried to fill it with everything in life, but I can't get satiated or satisfied. And he says, I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you in intimacy. I'm waiting for you. Come on, Jesus. The third level of intimacy is closing out everything in front of you. Prayer shawl. Everyone say prayer shawl. Um, I've never been a big prayer shawl guy just because it's like kind of it looks really interesting you know but I've had to humble myself because it probably actually looks a little bit cooler than the sock I used in the past or like my old t-shirt over my face or whatever so I literally last week I got a prayer shawl and guys it's amazing because I never understood for years why I had to pray with something over my face and I realize now that it's about deep close intimacy with God block everything else out block it out block the world out it doesn't satisfy you we think oh oh, Ben you don't understand how strong my flesh is you don't want that C.S. Lewis says the problem with people is they seek pleasure but not to the fullest he said if they would seek the fullest level of pleasure they would wind up with Jesus come on Jesus there were these two people high on Thursday. There's a uh, husband and wife, and they were on meth. And we started praying for them. They got wrecked. They got delivered. And the Holy Spirit hit them. And they're like, I was like, how do you feel? They're like, amazing. I was like, that's because you found something good finally. You keep putting stuff in your body because you're looking for a feeling. And you found the one who gives the feelings, and it's a lot better. And they're like, this is amazing. I'm like, you're not high anymore either. They're like, nope, not on drugs. Come on, Jesus. But guys, get deep with Jesus. Intimacy. Put the prayer shawl over your head. Just get a sweatshirt. It doesn't matter. Block everything out. God's waiting for you in the dark cloud. You make your quiet time a place of darkness, a place where it's just you and Jesus. That's why we turn the lights off during worship. That's why we try and block out the light as much as we can. Um, But we're not always successful, but we do our best, right? We want to get alone. We want to be dark. We just want intimacy. Okay. Moving on. Last word, gnosko. Everyone say gnosko. Okay, again, we talked about how gnosko is a Greek word where he says, depart from me, I never knew you, right? So Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Everyone say, not everyone will enter the kingdom of heaven. That's a sad thing, but it's true. It's true, right? Not everyone will, who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does, everyone say does, 
the will of my Father in heaven. Good. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name? Guys, just because you move in the power of God does not mean you're submitted to God's word, right? Just because you're moving the power of God does not mean you're submitted to God's word, right? God wants people who are powerful, and he wants people who are submitted. He wants people who are literally uh, uh, following God's commandments. Because he says, and I'll declare to him, I never knew you, verse 23, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. The word lawlessness in the Greek means to be above the law. Think that they are above God's law, above God's word, right? These people, they don't have real intimacy with God and they think that they're above God's word. They do whatever they want. They don't submit to God's word. And he says, depart from me. You think you're above my law. You're not. Just because you move in the power, just because you have a gift, just because you have anointing, you are not above God's word. He says, I have exalted my word above my name. His word's powerful, guys. Come on, Jesus. Shukar that was a side note, not really what I was going to talk about there. But he says, depart from me, I never knew you. You know, Christianity is all about knowing God. Intimacy. God's calling you into a secret place. You don't have to pray for 5,000 hours. But guys, there's literally a reason he wrote that in Revelation where he's calling you back. He's calling you back. He's saying, hey, it's a crazy time. Come on, Jesus. We're almost there. Okay. Uh, intimacy with God does not lead to isolation or rebellion, right? A lot of times, like, I'll see, like, over the last five years, even, like, when we teach in other countries, like, in Africa, we saw this, too, like, where people will sometimes still get intimate with God, and it leads to, uh, sometimes they'll have rebellion or whatever, because they're like, well, I have the Spirit of God, now I don't need the Word, I don't need accountability, I don't need community, right? Real intimacy with God will get you pressing more into people, because now you have love for people, and it's like, oh, this is great, right? Now I can actually be in the body, I can grow more, I can commit and submit it, grow, glow, and go, right? And so it's very important to realize that intimacy will not get you. If you have a voice in your head telling you to separate from the body, you have a higher revelation, you know more things, they don't know what they're talking about, all that stuff, realize that is not the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's a deceptive voice, and as you're growing in intimacy and in the Lord, it's okay to talk to people and let people help you discern what voices those are, right? Because you're learning to discern God's voice. Psalms 91. You don't have to turn there. You don't have to turn there. But Psalms 91 literally says, He that dwells in the secret place will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Secret place is safety. Sometimes we're like, God, where were you? And God's like, it's funny that you should say that because I've been wondering that for a couple years, right? <laughs> Seriously, though, you know, we find ourselves in a bind. and We're like, don't you see what happened, God? Where were you? And God's like, who who are you? I want to know you. I want to be close to you. I want to spend time. I died for it. I gave every last drop of blood just so I could have a relationship with you. Right? But I want to know you. The Jesus thing isn't just a sinner's prayer, a back and forth, words to say. The Jesus thing is literally God saying, I had a deep relationship with Adam and Eve in the cool of the garden. I walked and talked with them. I had a relationship with them. Deep right? Deep, deep, deep. And now I'm going to send my son, put him on a cross, take the blood out of his body, drain every fiber just so I can have a deep, intimate relationship with you, a person who your sin would naturally separate you from me, but I'm not going to let that get in the way of my love for you. As long as you're humble and you believe and you repent and come back, I'm running after you. But at the same time, press into me. I want to know you. Guys, you got to know God right? You got to actually know God, not know about God, not listen to podcasts, know God, know who he is, have a deep revelation of intimacy with God. God wants to know you. And yes, the blood of Jesus is what saves you, but you have to realize that God, does, he, he shed his blood, not just to take away your sins, he shows what? Because he's perfect, right? God's perfect. Can we agree God is perfect, right? And can we agree we're not perfect? Can we do that? Yeah, we're not perfect? Okay. So in order for an imperfect person to have a relationship with a perfect God, someone has to give. And we can't because no matter what good we do, we already have bad. And so God literally reached out and said, I need to pull you up to my level. But not just for the sake of forgiving your sins, for the sake of deep, deep intimacy. Come on, Jesus. 
All right, we're almost there. But when you abide close to God, Psalms 91, 1, when you're in the secret place, you're in God's shadow. And when you're in God's shadow, you're so close to Him, it's really hard for Satan to get around you, right? And so literally, you don't want God saying, hey, where were you? When you say, God, where were you, right? You should be so close to God that it's easy. Okay, moving on, moving on. We got the summary, but it's a long summary, okay? (laughs) Okay, Hosea 3, Hosea 3. You know, it's funny because I'm in San Diego, so... Uh, when I was putting my notes, I spelled Hosea with a J. <laughs> it's all right. Some of you don't get it. We'll get there. That's all right. <laughs> I did it in my notes. It's Josea. So <laughs> in Spanish, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Josea 3.1. The Lord, the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, Hosea 3.1, go, uh, go show your love to your wife again. Though she, she is loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites. Though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. It's interesting. So, so I bought her for 15 shekels of silver, about a homer and a, a, a lethic of barley. And then I told her, you are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will behave the same way towards you. For the Israelites will live many days without a king or prince, without sacrifice or sacrifice stones, without an ephod or houses of gods. Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last day. Now, I'm going to read uh, Hosea 2, and I'm going to read a few verses here, okay? So just sit tight. This is really, really important. And this is God talking to Hosea. And he's talking to Gomer. And Gomer is basically a prostitute, right? Some of us know the story. Some of us don't. In the book of Hosea, God tells the prophet Hosea to buy this prostitute named Gomer. And Gomer, what she does is she'll sleep around a little bit and then basically cheat on her husband Hosea. And then Hosea gets all hurt and all that stuff. And God says, go buy her back. Go pay for her to come back and live with you, right? And so they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And God says it. the whole point is to demonstrate how Israel is basically cheating on him with idols and false gods and it's to demonstrate God's unending love and him saying I'm running after you with my crazy love right but let's lead, read here Hosea 2.4 Josea oh my Hosea 2.4 and this is first he's going to start with what will happen if she doesn't turn back or if Israel doesn't turn back and then he's going to go into the blessing Hosea 2 4 I will have no compassion on her children because they are the children of adultery For their mother has played the harlot and has conceived them in disgrace. For she thought, I will go after my lovers, who give bread and water, wool, linen, oil, and drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up her path with thorns. I will enclose her with a wall so she cannot find her way. For she will pursue her lovers but not catch them. She will seek them but not find them. Then she will say, I will return to my first husband. For then I was better off than now. For she does not acknowledge that it was I who gave her grain new wine and oil who lavished on her silver and gold which are crafted for ball therefore I will take back my grain in its time and my new wine in its season I will take away my wool and linen which were given to cover her nakedness and I will expose her lewdness in the sight of her lovers and no one will deliver her out of my hand I will put an end to all her exultation her feasts new moon sabbaths all her appointed feasts I'll destroy her vines and fig trees which she thinks are the wages paid by her lovers so I will make them into a thicket. You notice how this, this girl, right, thinks that all that she has is blessed by her hands, right? And God keeps saying, I'm going to take away the blessing, which is actually mine, that she thinks is hers, right? And then she'll know where the favor comes from, right? Crazy. Uh, 12. I'll destroy her vines and fig trees, which she thinks are the wages paid by her lovers. So I will make them into a thicket, and the beasts of the field will devour them. I will punish her for the days of the balls, when she burns incense to them, when she decked herself with rings and jewelry, verse 13, and went after her lovers. But she forgot me. Verse 14. Listen to this. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and lead her to the wilderness and speak to her tenderly. There I will give her back her vineyards and make the valley of Accor into a gateway of hope. There she will respond as she did in the days of her youth. Everyone say, the days of my youth. As in the day she came up out of Egypt. In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me husband. 
You will no longer call me master. You will call me husband. For I will remove from her lips the names of the balls. No longer will their names be invoked. On that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the creatures that crawl on the ground. And I will abolish bow and sword and weapons of war in the land and I will make them lie down in safety. So I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice in loving devotion and compassion. And I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will know the Lord. Verse 19, listen to that, guys. I will betroth you or marry you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in loving devotion and compassion. That kind of sounds like God's literally giving us his oath, his wedding vows, right? Doesn't that sound like, right, his wedding vows? I will betroth to you forever. I will betroth you in righteousness, justice, in loving devotion and compassion. Now, I want you guys to remember really quickly what's happening in this story. This happens like four or five times where God says, love this girl. He first tells him, he's like, uh, Hosea, right? I want you to go and marry the prostitute. And Hosea's like, no, God, that's crazy. She won't be faithful, right? And so he does, and he, he pays for it and all that stuff. And so she comes, like, and she marries him and all that stuff. And then after a while, she leaves him. And Hosea is r- r- shattered. His heart shatters. He's wrecked. And he says, Lord, she's gone. And the Lord says, Go buy her back. He goes back. He pays for her. God gives grace on her, right? And then she goes back to her old ways. They go back and forth and back and forth. And God is literally demonstrating his unfailing love, saying, I love you in the midst of the crazy things that you've done. And I have grace. I have compassion. I have mercy. And I'm calling you back. I'm calling you out of darkness. I'm calling you out of idolatry. I'm calling you out of apathy. And I'm calling you into intimacy. Okay, come on, Jesus. One more and then we're done. Come on, Jesus. (laughs) Song of Solomon. We're doing a lot of reading today, guys. Who knows it's good to know the word? (laughs) <laughs> okay, uh, Song of Solomon, verse 2. Listen, my beloved, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke to me and said to me, Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter is past. And the rains are gone. Guys, God is literally calling you today into a deep relationship with Him. He's literally saying, come into the secret place. Come into the prayer closet. Come into your alone time, right? God wants you back for Him. He loves you. He's created you to have a destiny with Him. He's not punishing people because He's mad at people. He's literally saying, I created all of creation to have a relationship with the Creator, right? He's saying, I love you and I want to be in a relationship with you. You were designed to be with God. You were never designed to be apart from God. The closer you are to Him, the happier you are. The farther away you are, the farther away you are. Today we're not calling people to salvation. We're calling people into intimacy. We're saying, come a little bit deeper. Don't forget about the secret place. Maybe you need to sell your television. Maybe there's stuff in your life that you need to get out of your heart. Maybe you need to put your phone out of the room. Maybe you need to take a weekend and just pray with the Lord. Maybe the Lord's Spirit is in this place and He's literally drawing you to be in a deeper relationship and he's saying it's time to get back to what you did at the beginning it's time to get back to where you were at the beginning because a crazy time is coming on America and I'm looking for people who are consecrated who are dedicated and they'll run after me with everything they have I need people who are seeking me with all of their heart I need people who are running and he doesn't want hot or he doesn't want lukewarm he wants hot or cold he wants you to be hot or cold guys the grace that is absent from your life comes from spending time with God the grace that is absent from your life you're looking for more grace and you're like why doesn't stuff work out like it used to where's the joy that I used to have David says Lord return to me the joy of my first salvation return to me the joy of my first salvation God's saying I'm calling you back into the joy of your first salvation I'm calling you into a place of intimacy I'm calling and saying come out on the hills right come out to me you're my bride you're my wife you're my spouse I literally died for you Jesus' death was a wedding covenant communion symbolized that Jesus all he wanted was a marriage with you. He says, in my Father's house are many, many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. 
That's wedding talk in Jewish culture. He's saying, I made a place for you. I'm reaching out to you. I'm calling you. I'm on the hills. I'm calling. I'm saying, come home. It's time to come to the Lord. It's time to literally spend time in the secret place. It's time to stop being satisfied by the world and all the stuff that the world has. It's time to stop letting the world satisfy you because when you get to heaven, you won't care about any of it. You won't worry about what the world did for you. You won't worry about what you watched last. You won't worry about what you did last, about the next promotion, the next raise. You're going to worry about who you have with you. And you're going to worry about spending time with God. Remember at the beginning, we imagine being in heaven. Heaven is all about intimacy, God. It's all about intimacy, right? It's about you and Jesus. It'd be a shame to have that revelation the day you die, right? Why don't we start now? Why don't we start pressing into God now? You say, Ben, I'm close. We'll get closer, right? It's not a good time to be lukewarm in uh, America's history. It's a time to press in. And God needs intercessors in America. He needs people who are pressing in. Because there's a lot of people just getting wrecked and getting destroyed. The death rate right now all over the place is insane. People are dropping like flies. I know so many people, uh, not people in this community, but people all around, people I know, people uh, I know of, who are just literally like dying. It's crazy, like random, not even COVID. It's like all over the place. And I have a feeling this winter is going to be kind of a crazy winter, right? But God is literally calling and saying, guys, you are a hope for America. The people who know me, the people who seek me, who have intimacy, I need you close to the fire when the world gets cold and the frost starts coming and the cold closes around you. I need that fire. I need the hungry. I need not people to be lukewarm. I need them to be on fire. I need them to press in. I need them to prioritize their relationship with me. I need them to prioritize the time alone on the mountain. And I want to make kings and I want to make queens, but I only make them in the secret place. I only make them in the secret place. I'm looking for people to spend time with me so I can reward them openly. I'm looking for people to get alone with me so I can get alone with them. I'm looking for people to get alone with with my word and let my word cleanse them. I don't need a rebellious generation. I need a hungry generation. I need a hungry generation. You won't get what you're trying to do by anarchy. You won't get what you're trying to do by going your own way. You'll get it in the secret place. And I need you. I need you for your generation. The whole world is waiting for you to seek God the way that He needs you to seek Him to change the world. They're waiting for you. Your co-workers are waiting for you. Your family is waiting for you. Your friends are waiting for for you. The world is dying right now. They're waiting for you to get serious and get real with God. And God's saying, I don't need more people to sit in pews. I need more people on their knees. I need more people on the mountaintop. I need more people seeking me with all of their heart. Today, God's calling you into intimacy. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask right now that you just call us into deeper intimacy and choose to respond with yes, God. We choose to respond with yes, God. We thank you for the hunger that you place in our hearts, God. And we ask for more. We ask that you'd stir us up. That you'd draw us in, God. We choose to draw near to you because you've already drawn near to us, God. We ask for your grace, God. Give us grace to be intercessors for this generation. Give us grace to be missionaries to this generation, God. Burn like a fire inside of us, God, for this nation. Burn like a fire inside of us, God. We repent for being distracted by the world. We just repent for being lulled to sleep by the desires and the pleasures of the world. We repent for lust and lies and fear, God. And we want you, God. We acknowledge that only you will fill us, God. We acknowledge that this relationship with you, God, is the best thing that we've ever had. The best thing that we'll ever have is you, God. We need you more than we need the sun. We need you more than we need food. We need you more than we need money, than we need work, than we need life, God. In you we move and live and breathe and have our being, God. Use us, God. Use us, God, as a people set apart for you, God. Use us, God. Change our hearts from the inside to the out. Don't let us be a product of America. Let us be a product of heaven, God. Don't let us be a product of this America, God. Let us be a product of heaven, God. Change our hearts, God. Put a desire in our hearts. Stir us up right now, God, like never before, God. Stir us up, God. We are hungry, God. We don't just want to play church, God. We want to have you, God. We don't just want to come here, God. We want you, God change our hearts God change our hearts Song of Solomon 2 
He says, listen, my beloved, look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, arise, my darling, my beloved one, come to me. See, the winter is past. The rains are gone. Come to me. If God stirred your heart tonight for a deeper call to intimacy, just put your hand up, close your eyes, and start responding to the call of the Holy Spirit right now. Just get on your face. Let's seek God and let's make a commitment more than an emotional appeal on a Sunday. Let's make a commitment in our heart to seek God for the generation. Let's make a commitment in our heart to seek God in the secret place. Draw us to you, God. Draw us to you, God. Draw us to you, God, right now, God. We don't just want to play church today, God. We ask right now, God, in Jesus' name, God. We make a commitment, God, right now to seek you with all of our hearts. We make a commitment to not be surprised when we get to heaven, God. We make a commitment, Lord God, to not be surprised about the intimacy level in heaven, God. We make a commitment to seek after you with all of our hearts. We make a commitment to seek after you with all of our hearts. We lay aside offense, God, and the people that have gone in the way of us that we have allowed to get in the way of us we lay aside a fence and we press into you God we're on our way to Zion God but we don't want to do it without you we don't want to live this life without you we need another level of intimacy God we need to know you like you love us God we need to love you like you love us God we need to know you like you know us God maybe sometimes we feel like the thief on the cross and we say, I've been a sinner. And here I am next to Jesus. And he seems so far away, but he's so close. At the same time, maybe we feel like him. And all we have to say is, Jesus, I believe in you. And he says, this day, you will be with me in paradise. This day, how so kalabosa. Guys, the world is crying out for you. They're waiting for you. They're begging for you. Your family is begging for you. Your friends are begging for you. Your spouse is begging for you. Your children are begging for you. They're saying, I need someone to bridge the gap between here and heaven. I need someone to show me what Jesus looks like. I need someone to intercede for my generation. People are dying every day on the streets in Mexico. People are dying from drug overdose in San Diego every single day. Hopeless are dying on on the streets in the forest where you never see them they're crying out and someone needs to preach to me about Jesus there's people in Africa by the thousands dying and they're saying where are the missionaries where are the people after God's heart where are the hungry where are the hungry in intimacy God will call you to the nations in intimacy God will call you to your family in intimacy God will call you on the streets in intimacy God will call you to your workers to the lost to the hurting never think that this Christian thing is a religious ceremony ceremony or words that you speak on a Sunday or a Wednesday never think this is just a ceremony this is a deep relationship with the king of kings and he's calling us home he's calling us deeper he's saying come into the river drink of me come into the river drink of me come a little deeper 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 father right now we make a commitment, God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you give us wisdom on what to do, how to seek you, God. Yes, we have other commitments in our life, God, but you are the main commitment, God. We choose to prioritize you. We choose to prioritize time with you, God. If we put you first, you will put us and our family first, God. We repent, Lord God, for turning time into idolatry. We repent, Lord God, for turning family into idolatry, work into idolatry, God. We repent, Lord God, for turning life, ministry into idolatry. God, like Mary and Martha, Mary sits with Jesus. Martha serves Jesus. Jesus says, Martha, Mary has chosen the better part. And this won't be taken away. It's the better part. Then later on in the Gospels, when the Pharisees are talking to him, they're talking about tithing. And they talk, and they're talking about tithing and all that stuff. And Jesus says this. He says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. 
You should have done these without neglecting the others. And God's the same thing with Mary and the Martha thing. He's saying, don't stop serving me for intimacy. Don't neglect one thing to do the other. Do it both. Start seeking after me with everything you have. I'm calling you. Guys, some of you have been hurting like your heart feels like it's breaking some days and it's because you're not being satisfied with God. It's not because the person you keep idolizing that you think is there to fill your heart and fill your love tank. It is not them. It is Jesus. He's calling you and saying, I need to fill you. I'm on the mountain. I'm calling calling you deeper. I'm calling you deeper. I'm calling you deeper. If you get in the perfect relationship, you still won't be perfectly happy because you don't have someone who perfectly loves you. You need to be loved by God. Call us deeper, God. Call us deeper, God. Call us deeper. We answer the call, God. Use us, Father. Use us, God. Use us, God. Two years ago, it might have been a little different. Maybe. Your call is the same. But we've all seen what the world's been trying to do. We see what Satan's trying to do in America. He's trying to sift them out. And you need people who are passionately in love with you and seeking you daily for their country, for their nation. God, we give you glory. We give you praise right now. Everyone, if you mean it, say, Jesus... Thank you for calling me to intimacy. I choose to respond. Give me wisdom how to do it with my life. When in doubt, I choose to prioritize you. I turn away from all other draws on time. And I turn to you. I want to know you long before heaven. I want to know you long before heaven everyone say holy spirit i want to know you i want to know you i want to know you i want to encounter you i want to know you god i ask that your spirit would just be in this place in a strong way god and you'd stir it up god that your wind would blow in this place in jesus name and that we know you god say hold on that we know you god your spirit god that you can us God of sin and you convict us of righteousness as well God that your spirit Holy Spirit just be here 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 Jesus in Jesus name guys just make a commitment in your heart right now to seek God everyone's life is different as far as times and duration and all that stuff again you still have to do the other stuff in your life obviously but we need to set the priorities straight guys In Revelation, he said, go back to what you did at the beginning. Remember your first love. Father, we remember our first love, which is you, God. We remember our first love. We reject the lie of the world. We reject the lie of media. That lust can fill us. That the perfectly attractive person can fill us that the perfectly uh, well-spoken person can fill us, the most sensitive person can fill us. We reject those lies. We thank you that we only get filled in you, Jesus. Everything else is supplementary, God. And we repent, God, for idolatry of self, idolatry in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory and give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Guys, just close your eyes for a second. Lydia's just going to play this song once through. I just want you to realize that this is God calling you into intimacy right now.
quick say Holy Spirit show me practically how I can seek you in my life and regardless of what you say or don't say I make a commitment now to press into intimacy and just whatever you hear write it down quick it'll be the first thing to pop in your spirit a daily thing, could be in the morning, could be in the evening, some type alone, the word and prayer, it's easy, pray in English, pray in the spirit, get back to the beginning. Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Holy Ghost. Guys, I really feel super strong, like something's coming with this country, you know, and we've got to be pressing into God. We've got to be close to the fire, right? So that we thaw the cold instead of being a product of it. Come on, Jesus. All right, champions. Love you guys so much. I was all Holy Ghost. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All right, let's have everybody stand up. If you're Fire Academy alumni, put your hand up. If you're Fire Academy alumni, put your hand up. Let's pray give them to groups of three to five people. Pray for people for healing, deliverance. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, ask one of the people with their hands up to pray for you. You're going to get saved today. Come on, Jesus. Let's get a group of pray three to five.